G'day, g'day, and welcome to a very exciting episode of Kiwi Car Life because today we have a Honda S660. Now, what is this? It looks tiny for starters. Well, it's a continuation of Honda's S line of cars. It began with the S500, S600, and S800 back in the 60s and 70s, and then obviously, as we all know, Honda gave us the S2000. And that in itself was a very, very special car. And then Honda decided to carry it on and gave us this, the S660. On the exterior front, it looks absolutely incredible. It's very sort of cutesy, but also quite aggressive as well. It's got some really nice looking little LED lights down here, and it's obviously also a convertible as well, so you can take the roof off. And around the back, it looks awesome too. It's got some really nice looking little LED lights, and of course, a very cool little center mount exhaust. What I think is the coolest about this design though, is that everything is bespoke. It's not like a parts bin special in there, sure the indicators and stuff are from other Hondas, but like everything is proportional. They made the lights a little bit smaller, they made the wheels a little bit smaller, they made the door handles a bit smaller, the mirrors a bit smaller, the steering wheel a bit smaller. And what it means is that when you see this car just on its own, it looks like a normal car. But when you see it parked next to something else, it is tiny. Now, regular viewers of my channel knew exactly where I was going next with that line. This interior is tiny. It really doesn't have a lot of space, but hey, you can fit two people in it. And a bit later on, I'll get into sort of how I fit in this interior. But the steering wheel feels really nice, has some cool little 10 and 2 notches, and it's actually surprisingly well equipped in here too. It's got automatic climate control, auto lights, paddle shifters, cruise control, keyless entry, and a really, really cool looking gauge cluster. I think the coolest part about it is that when you push the sport button, it changes to be a sort of bright red theme instead of the white theme. But overall, the interior is actually really nice. So what is the S660 like to drive? Well, let's just say it's not the most comfortable car in the world. People will ask me in the comments, so I'll just tell you now, I'm six foot, or maybe six foot one on a good day. And look, I fit, I'm reasonably comfortable in these seats, I have enough leg room, my arms are fine. However, I do have to kind of sit a little bit forward in the seat to avoid hitting something quite hard out, something quite hard uh, behind me here. So let's just say in terms of comfort, it's fine for getting around, but I don't know that I want to sit in it long term. But that said, these seats are actually quite nice. They're very nice sort of uh, suede, alcantara -y type seats. They hold you in really well through the corners. And above all else, even when you're just cruising around, people look at you, it's, it's, a, just, it's just a cool car, let's be honest. The engine is a 660cc three-cylinder turbocharged engine with 64 horsepower naturally with this being a key car and i believe that's 47 kilowatts if you use the metric system here we go second gear through the tunnel let's see what she sounds like what an absolute sound now that we're on the motorway we can start to sort of see what this car is like when you get it up to some speed and the first thing you notice is that the power level i mean hey it accelerates and it sounds fantastic, but it's not the fastest car in the world. And if I just now put it in drive, we're doing 100 kilometers an hour, it's doing just over 3000 RPM. But the main thing I think you notice is that it is very, very loud in here. And there's a lot of wind noise, but despite the noise, it's actually still reasonably comfortable, I have to say. I'm going to put down this car's best feature, its tiny little rear window back here and listen to the greatest sound in the world. <laughs> Words cannot describe how good that sounds. I'm hardly moving, I'm doing like 40 kilometers an hour, but listen, listen to that. The turbo noises in this thing are just insane. Here we go, the handling. Look, I'm going to be honest, it does understeer a bit and I think I'm going to put that down to the fact that it has very, very skinny little tyres. It handles well, but if you push too hard, the front end just sort of sloshes wide. But in a way, I don't really mind the fact that the handling is not like supercar level because 
it just encourages this car's whole sort of fun factor where you get the sense that you don't need to do a million miles an hour to have fun this whole time i've been doing well within the speed limit and it is still <laughs> just an absolute hoot to drive i'm gonna put this window down again <laughs> honestly i cannot describe how utterly utterly brilliant this car is and the great thing about it is that it actually holds the ratios so if i put it in third gear here you feel it change down and then when you put your foot down it doesn't surge or anything like that it just gives you that absolutely fantastic soundtrack in just the way that you want it now obviously this does come in a six-speed manual i'll make that clear and if you do want this as a driver's car i would highly recommend that you get the manual one but even with a cvt this car is like words cannot describe how good this car is it just puts a smile on your face 24 7 every time you drive this it feels absolutely phenomenal it sounds amazing handles great looks so cool man what an awesome car well there we go thank you very much for watching this episode of kiwi car life and i will look forward to seeing you again next time